Here's an FTC update. First, FTC actions when they slapped a $10 million fine on a flawed extended warranty company known as CarShield. And then an update on the Cars rule and how that's going. What can you, the consumer, do? Hello, friends. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy here, bringing you the real deal on extended warranty contracts and what you need to watch out for. But before we roll on today's show, I just want to say that if you missed the cell phone video that I shot of the amazing Elizabeth singing at a local wedding, make sure you check it out. It was mind-blowing awesome. Today, we're diving into a big name you've probably heard of, CarShield. You've maybe seen the ads, the washed-up celebrities, the promises, but is it all it's cracked up to be? Is there actually any woo with CarShield? Liz, let's break it down. Thanks, Kevin. No woo at CarShield at the moment. More like whoa. Yeah, you got it. Nice. So in the latest news, the story starts with why the FTC caught up with CarShield, hit them with a $10 million fine, and we'll break down what it means for you, the consumer, and what you need to look for if you've ever bought an extended warranty from any company. By the end of the video, you'll know if you can get some of your money back on that extended warranty. That's right, so don't miss it. On July 31st, the FTC published several articles and court documents about CarShield. The FTC says CarShield didn't cover car repairs as advertised. Yep. Sorry to say we've heard so many extended warranty horror stories. This news isn't really much of a surprise to us here at the Homer Guy team. If a company selling extended warranties had tons of exceptions and exclusions to their coverage, wouldn't you want to know? Right, yeah. Yes. But the FTC says CarShield conveniently, or rather inconveniently, left that part out. Well, friends, you might have seen some of the misleading TV ads, washed up old celebrities touting CarShield's promise that you'll never pay for expensive car repairs again. What's equally cringeworthy are the videos CarShield has published on their YouTube channel, trying to catch a wider audience with this bimbo who clearly knows nothing about cars. (laughs) So after viewers saw the ads I was talking about, if you called in to CarShield, a specialist confirmed what the ads promised and even offered to sign the contract on your behalf. Oh, Ooh, nothing sketchy. sketchy about signing a contract for you, is there? No, well, of course not. But after you gave your okay and your credit card, the FTC says customers got a thick document full of many, many exceptions and exclusions. CarShield isn't fooling people anymore these days. Just check out the comment section of their videos Kevin referred to on YouTube. Peter K. writes, should be called Scam Shield. He nailed it. Right on. Patrick Johnson writes, yeah, if he had called and got CarShield before his car broke down, he'd still have to pay for everything because CarShield would find a way to deny his claim. And one more noteworthy comment. Bustin writes, you buy one of the policies, you are going to get more than the camshaft. You are going to get the shaft. (laughs) That's funny. CarShield, the honeymoon is definitely over, guys. As these viewers have stated, if you tried to use your coverage, you'd discover CarShield might require you to pay to find out what caused your breakdown. They might fail to cover the needed repairs and might decline to give you a rental car until your claim is approved. And, of mm-hmm. course, they take their good old time approving it. The FTC says CarShield customers also had trouble finding a mechanic willing to even accept their CarShield contracts. Yep. That's pretty telling. If a mechanical garage won't accept your extended warranty coverage, it's because they know they won't get paid. Yes. Funny because the ad Vivica Fox did for them says, go to the mechanic or dealership of your choice. Bottom line, This statement is patently false. Anyone who knows me knows that I love fashion with clean lines and a tad bit of sparkle. Less is best. Oh, now, see, this is what we would call hashtag too much. No. You see, some shops just charge what they want and call it high end. But CarShield can help protect you against all that. CarShield keeps it classy and affordable and helps cover your expensive repair bills so you aren't left over paying for something like this. No, thank you. What I'm saying is call CarShield to help avoid all the stress and hot mess so you and your car can feel fabulous the way you're supposed to be. That's right, honey. Pow! I'm rocking with CarShield and you should too. Sounds great on the surface if it were true, doesn't it? But with all the advertised greatness and washed-up celebrity endorsements, it still didn't stop the Federal Trade Commission from dropping a bombshell on CarShield to the tune of $10 million in fines. They say CarShield's ads are more fluff than fact, and we totally agree. You know something interesting? On a website touting the top 10 warranties consumers can buy, CarShield is actually listed at number 6 on the list. 
supposedly they have over 18,000 reviews and are ranked at 6.8 on that website. Wow. A supposed editor, Aditi Patel, on the Top 10 Warranties website writes, CarShield is a well-established entity in the auto warranty industry. They provide extended warranties for both new and used vehicles, offering a safeguard against pricey, unforeseen repairs through their customized service contracts. The company has been recognized among the top car warranty companies in 2024, demonstrating its strong reputation in the industry. (laughs) Wow, what a pile of crap that is. Yeah. Goes to show that editors on sites like this either write what they are told to write or they actually have no clue whatsoever. Well, checking through their reviews, their composite score is just three stars. Pretty miserable. It's a lot of unhappy people. On the Top 10 Warranty site, the conclusion reads, Despite a few negative reviews, CarShield has a strong reputation in the car warranty industry. Their comprehensive coverage, round-the-clock customer support, and customizable plans make them a solid choice for many vehicle owners. Yeah, right. You know, it's interesting, you guys, we're talking here about CarShield, but you could actually almost substitute any extended warranty company name into this story, and it would still apply. Yep. So clearly that site on the Top 10 Extended Warranties is nothing more than an advocate for extended warranty companies, not an honest review of what's good or bad in the industry. Now, we agree that maintaining your car can be pricey, but we prefer to maintain our cars through our savings account, friends. However, if you're still thinking about an extended warranty, despite our warnings, here are some tips to follow. Number one, read the contract first. Never agree to something you haven't read. Check for exclusions and restrictions specifically. If the finance salesman, and that's right, he's a salesman making a commission, that's right. won't let you read the coverages, that's a sure sign to just say no. Look for exclusions that deny coverage or restrict where you can get your car serviced. Does the contract match the coverage the salesperson described to you? If not, walk away. Number two, check for existing coverage or denial of coverage. Mm -hmm. Your car might already be covered under an existing warranty, or your car might be ineligible for coverage for a variety of reasons. It's best to know that before you hand over the money. Number three, be wary of celebrity endorsements like you saw here with CarShield. Don't rely solely on what celebrities say. Look for reviews from trusted sources. If you look at CarShield, they had Ice-T, Vivica Fox, and other washed-up old celebrities promoting it on TV. It's helpful to look at reviews from a variety of sources, like trusted websites with impartial expert reviews. Someone who isn't being paid to promote that warranty, right? Also, be on the lookout for fake reviews, and as Kevin mentioned earlier, fake websites that are actually advocates for the extended warranty companies and not there to give you a real honest opinion. Now, here's the kicker. CarShield and their administrator, American Auto Shield, just agreed to pay $10 million to settle these deceptive advertising charges. The FTC says these ads featuring these washed-up celebrities misled consumers into believing all repairs could be covered. By the way, the FTC is not calling them washed up. We are. (laughs) Spoiler alert, they aren't and they weren't. For sure. The FTC's complaint outlines several key points. The first off is the misleading ads, claiming that all repairs are covered, you get a rental car at no cost, and you can use any repair facility. All of that, not true. All of it bullshit. Right. And number two, celebrity endorsements. Celebrities claim they used and benefited from CarShield's plans, but... Often, they hadn't even signed up. No surprise there either. (laughs) Right. Number three, consumer endorsements. Consumers touted saving specific amounts in these TV ads, which also turned out to be false. You know what that reminds me of, Liz? All the anecdotal stories told by car salesmen that they love to tell about a buddy who was totally saved by gap insurance, for example. Right. Those are also totally made up stories. So what's the end result of the FTC's actions? CarShield is now prohibited from making these misleading statements and must ensure all future endorsements are truthful. We would add that nobody should ever buy a CarShield extended warranty. Yep. They're also on the hook for a $10 million fine, which will go to refunding defrauded consumers. I actually really like it that the FTC fine is levied to refund swindled customers. Many purchasers found that many repairs were not covered despite making payments of up to $120 a month. 120 a month? That's insane. I know. For many consumers, a personal vehicle is one of their most valuable assets and a vital lifeline for getting to work, taking your kids to school, obtaining medical care. Instead of delivering the peace of mind promised by its advertisements, 
CarShield left many consumers with a financial headache, said Samuel Levine, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection. Worse still, CarShield used trusted personalities to deliver its empty promises. The FTC will hold advertisers accountable for using false or deceptive claims to exploit consumers' financial anxieties. The bottom line, folks, if you're paying 120 a month to a warranty company, think about something. How fast would paying yourself 120 a month add up in your savings account? That's right? almost 1500 bucks in one year. Yes. You'd be covered with your own saved cash, which is exactly what we do. When it comes to extended warranties, you don't want to get taken for a ride. Do your homework before signing any car service contract or extended warranty. Read the fine print, check existing warranties, and look beyond the flashy ads and the washed-up celebrity endorsements. You know, extended warranties are a tricky business, and we've always advised staying away from them, but you can recoup some of your money if you have ever bought one. In the midst of all the shadiness surrounding extended warranties, there is some good news. All of them have a separate page in the car contract, so go pull out your car contract and look for the name and phone number of the warranty company. The process for canceling extended warranty varies by provider, but here are some general steps that you can take. Number one, contact the provider. You can find contact information in your policy paperwork. If you recently purchased the warranty, you can call the finance manager who sold it to you. For third-party warranties, you might need to call or write a letter to the company. If the dealer finance manager gives you any pushback, go to the dealer accounting offices instead. They tend to help you much more. Number two, explain your intent. So you need to be firm and state that you want to cancel your plan. The warranty company may try to retain your business, so you might be routed to a retention specialist. Just keep saying no thanks. Number three, follow instructions. The provider may ask you to complete a cancellation form, provide proof of odometer reading, or bring the form to a dealership. If you cancel by phone, you should get the contact's name and the cancellation number to keep for your records. And submit the required documentation. You might need to sign and even notarize the cancellation form, but just get it done. If you're bringing the form to a dealership, you might need to get a signed copy from them. You should always keep copies of any correspondence you send and documentation you provide to support your request, because after all, you know who you're dealing with. A car dealer. Mm -hmm. Number five is the follow-up. After a few days, you should receive a cancellation confirmation, such as an email, text message, or mail receipt. If you're due a refund, it's likely to be a prorated amount, but you should follow up until you actually get the credit. Now, many of our viewers were concerned that the FTC CARS rule would never go into effect. If you are wondering if the FTC can or can't help you, I think you have your answer sitting in plain view in this case involving NADA. Here's the latest scoop on the CARS rule and who is holding it up. The following information comes directly off the NADA website, sneaky little lobbyists that they are, and they are calling Congress people to co-sponsor the FTC Redo Act. This was published June 14, 2024, claiming that the FTC's vehicle shopping rule, also the CARS rule, will harm car buyers with added costs, more paperwork, and a longer sales process. Total bullshit, of course. Oh yeah, we all know that. They go on to say, the Federal Trade Commission's recently finalized CARS rule will add massive amounts of paperwork and costs to the car buying process. The little whiners continue saying the FTC finalized the rule amid ongoing congressional oversight into the agency's vast regulatory overreach in proposing the rule, its lack of credible data-driven analysis, and other significant process flaws. Of course, there's always flaws with anything the FTC does with regard to NADA, and never a flaw ever going on at any dealership. Yeah. Now, here's a funny statement Liz found right on NADA's very own website. Liz, take it away. Oh, I just love this. It reads, All harms the rule is purportedly designed to address are already addressed under existing law. Well, doesn't that beat all? Isn't that exactly what we've been saying since the CARS rule was first introduced? Exactly. That these issues are already covered by current law in the books. I never thought we'd agree with NADA on anything. It continues with, the unnecessary rule will make vehicle shopping worse, not better. Going on to say, members of Congress should co-sponsor the FTC Redo Act to stop the flawed VSR and ensure that if the FTC opts to redo its rule, it must follow basic regulatory safeguards to avoid negatively impacting consumers and small businesses. Read all of that to negatively impacting dealers. Yeah. So there you have it. If you're wondering where the FTC is being hung up, it's by the Texas Automobile Dealers Association and NADA, and now even Congress. Yep. All bottom feeders. NADA supported language to deny FTC funding to enforce the CARS rule. It was included in the fiscal year 2025 
Financial Services and General Government Appropriations Bill that passed the House Appropriations Committee on June 13th. The measure was approved in committee with a vote of 33 to 24. Financial Services and General Government Subcommittee Chairman David Joyce of Ohio said, The core mission of this bill is to protect the integrity of America's financial and judicial systems. In order to fulfill that mission, this bill makes cuts to prevent agency overreach by prohibiting funds for dozens of regulating actions such as blocking the FTC from controlling how everyday Americans purchase a car. That's political speak from a politician saying, We side with the car dealers. No wonder a congressman and a car salesman are tied for dead last on a Gallup poll for being the least trustworthy professions. So friends, we'll close out today's show with a brief update on how our hassle-free car buying service is going. Stuart continues to come out on top with dealers on behalf of our viewers. Kevin? I said this not long ago. Out of all the things we have done to help car buyers over the last 15 years, our hassle-free car buying service is the best thing we've done by a long shot. Our service offers nearly triple the savings as compared to comparable competing services out there. It's also a ton faster. If people want to go slower, that's fine. But we can put people in a new car just 48 hours after they contacted us for help. Now, you don't have to go that fast if you don't want to, but we can go that fast if needed. If you're hearing about this service for the first time, go to our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and read our detailed posting on how it all works. The bottom line is, if you're feeling intimidated or don't have time to fight with those car dealers out there, let us know. We're here to help you. Thanks to all of you out there in the audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty to all of our longtime subscribers. You guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire Homework Guy team. Thanks for listening. 